I have this chart of Tesla up. I figure we'll start right with Tesla. We'll get into some market action. I also have some other interesting factors to show you. But number one, if we take a look at Tesla, look at how you had this wedge pattern. You broke lower. But notice how you haven't gone back up to retrace to what we would consider the scene of the crime. And the scene of the crime, again, is basically retracing up into this level, right? Back to these areas here. Instead, you've stalled out right here. Now, most investors would say, well, you know, that's weird. Why isn't it hitting the retrace of the scene of the crime? Number one, I think eventually it will. But number two, if you look closely, look at what you had here, right? There was a gap right from here down to here. Notice where price stalled out. There's something called a gap fill. When you create a gap, when price gets back to that level, there tends to be selling pressure that keeps price from really breaking above in the near term. Doesn't mean overall it's not gonna eventually go, but it stalls there. And what we could see here is if we draw a trend line right across here, we basically see that price rallied back, filled the gap, and is chopping sideways. Now, interestingly enough, what does this tell us in the short term? It tells us that it's consolidating in a sideways manner after a move up. What type of pattern formation is this? Right? That's the type of pattern. That's called a bull flag or in spirit of bull flag. Ultimately, what does that signal? It probably does signal we're headed back into this area, into the retrace to the scene of the crime. So again, that was the first chart I wanted to show you as an educational piece to kind of go over the little nuances of how to read charts to understand, yes, there's a scene of the crime. It eventually likely gets there, but you have to look at the chart to see why is it stalling where it is stalling. And this is a great example on the Tesla chart. Now, having said that, let's Let's take it one step further. We've gone to our micro point of time frame, right? Very short term. Then just a little bit further out is the move up. And then what about the big picture? Well, if we zoom out and let's go to the weekly chart, the big picture to me continues to be clear. What it, the big picture is showing us is that we've had this bounce from the bigger down move. We've now broken below support on the weekly chart. So even if this tends to go up here, eventually it likely is heading there. And again, as a technician, you have to understand that price and price action should be broken up into time frames. Are you looking at just the next few days? Are you looking at the next couple weeks? Are you looking at the next couple months or the next couple years? And the determining factor for that is what time frame are you analyzing? All right, so daily is gonna be over the next couple days to next couple weeks. If you're looking out the next couple months, you probably wanna be on the weekly chart. If you're looking at the next couple years, analyze the charts on a monthly basis. So look at the powering higher on gold here. Gold again, ripping higher today. We're now at $2,024 on gold. And you guys know I've been pounding the table. Do you guys remember, by the way, in this very broadcast, in this game plan, when we were down here, and I still remember this vividly, there was this big sell-off in gold where we flushed basically from 19, basically it was a $100 drop in the course of nine days down in a row, I believe it was. And right down here, everyone was freaking out. Oh my God, is the gold trade not gonna work out? Is, is it gold over? Is it gonna be this? Bitcoin is looking better, maybe that's the place. And it's like, no, look at the channel, the beauty of channels. And I show you guys channels almost every day. In fact, on Pin Duo Duo, we just looked at that. But look at the beauty of the channel, how you had that area to this area, to this area, to this area, and then the pivot low just perfectly aligned and that was your buy price. And I actually I actually picked up physical metal when it was right down here. And so far, so good, obviously, as price continues to rally to the upside. Now, again, we know our target, right? Our target into year end is this level at 20, 80, 20, 75, the all-time high. We also know that based on the hit methodology that I taught in yesterday's game plan, that once we get to four hits, which would be this next hit, the probabilities for a breakout start to increase dramatically. In other words, by the fourth hit, you're at about a 65 to 70% chance of a breakout. By the fifth hit, if it doesn't do it on the fourth, by the fifth hit, you're at about a 75 to 85% of chance of a breakout. So essentially what I would say between the fourth and the fifth hit, and this, if we go up here, this will be the fourth hit, 
you would be expecting a breakout on gold. So I continue to think gold is the play, and, and I, I've said this so many times in the game plan, but basically remember, the central banks have been buying gold hand over fist. They're the ones that print the money. If they're buying it, they probably are doing it for a reason, right? They probably know that the ultimate outcome of all the debt in the world, all the central bank debt, the government debt, all this stuff is more printing of money. And they are basically preparing their balance sheets for that by buying physical metal. It is what it is, guys. I don't like it, but it is what it is. It's not my, you know, ultimately, unfortunately, I don't have the power to change anything. All I can do is have my positions in gold as well. Take note of that and let you guys obviously know as well.